Hi everyone, my name is Praveen. I'm one of the Pulmonary and Critical Care Fellows. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how to set the best PEEP in acute respiratory distress syndrome. So let's start off with some basic ARDS pathophysiology. In ARDS, you have the development of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which decreases lung compliance and causes the collapse of alveolar units. You then have shunting of blood across these non-ventilated alveolar units, which causes hypoxemia. Conceptually, there's a small volume of normally inflated residual lung. We call this the baby lung. Now, this is a physiologic space. It's not a fixed anatomic space, and it can shift with increased recruitment and with proning. But it's this baby lung that experiences the brunt of mechanical ventilation. And while it is inflated, it's still inflamed with leaky capillaries and is prone to the furthering of lung injury. So ultimately, the heart of ARDS management is supportive. We're trying to allow time for the lung to heal while maintaining adequate oxygenation and ventilation, and trying not to worsen lung damage with ventilator-induced lung injury. Ventilator-induced lung injury comes in three flavors. You have volume trauma, which is lung injury due to high tidal volumes, barotrauma, which is lung injury due to high airway pressures, and adelic trauma, which is lung injury due to the sheer stress of the cyclic opening and closing of alveolar units. Ventilator-induced lung injury can be macroscopic with pneumothoraces and pneumomediastinum, or it can be microscopic and look just like ARDS with diffuse alveolar damage. Now I want to introduce to you here the concept of lung stress and lung strain, which are directly linked to ventilator-induced lung injury. Lung stress is proportional to the pressure that the lung experiences over the cross-sectional area of that lung. And lung strain is proportional to the change in volume over the starting volume, or in the case of the lung, the tidal volume over the functional residual capacity. Now we've already said that with the baby lung, the starting cross-sectional area of the lung and the starting volume are very small. This puts the lung at a higher risk of experiencing stress and strain, and thus a higher risk of develop developing ventilator-induced lung injury. And this is why it becomes important to then limit pressure and limit tidal volume. So why do we care about setting the best PEEP? Well, if the PEEP is too low, you'll have suboptimal recruitment, which, which leads to worse oxygenation. But you'll also have alveoli that instead of staying open are opening and closing, which increases your risk of adult trauma. You'll have a smaller baby lung, which leads to an increased risk of stress and strain. And you'll have a dependence on a higher FiO2, which can lead to oxygen toxicity. If your PEEP is too high, you'll overdistend already inflated alveoli, which decreases lung compliance and increases the risk of barotrauma. This overdistension can also compress alveolar blood vessels, which will shunt blood away from healthy lung to more diseased lung and worsen oxygenation. And high PEEP also has the hemodynamic effects of decreasing preload and increasing RV afterload, which can worsen cardiac output and oxygen delivery. So what are some different ways to set PEEP for patients with ARDS? Well, the most common way is using the ARDSNET PEEP FiO2 tables, which you probably all have seen. There are two of them. There's a lower PEEP, higher FiO2 table, and a higher PEEP, lower FiO2 table. But where do these tables come from? Well, the lower PEEP, higher FiO2 table came from the ARMA trial, which was a landmark multi-center randomized control trial from 2000 of 861 patients with ARDS that were randomized to either traditional ventilation with a tidal volume of 12 mLs per kilo ideal body weight and a target plateau pressure of 50 or less versus lung protective ventilation with a tidal volume of 6 mLs per kilo ideal body weight and a target plateau pressure of 30 or less. The ARMA trial established a significant mortality benefit for lung protective ventilation, but it wasn't studying PEEP. Now the above PEEP settings were used in the study but they were arbitrary and based on expert consensus at the time of how to balance the beneficial and adverse effects of PEEP. Now, despite a lack of strong evidence, these settings have been incorporated into common practice since the publication of this trial. After the ARMA trial, there was an interest in whether some patients with ARDS would benefit from a higher PEEP strategy. And so the alveoli trial was conducted. This was a multi-center randomized control trial of 549 patients that were randomized to receive either the ARMA PEEP FIR2 settings or the above higher PEEP settings. The trial showed no difference in mortality between the two, but a subsequent meta-analysis of three trials, which included alveoli, did show a mortality benefit of higher PEEP in patients with a PF ratio less than 200, 
so patients with moderate to severe ARDS. After this, it became common practice to consider a higher PEEP strategy in this subset of patients. But again, these settings in this table were completely arbitrary. So what are some ways we can individualize PEEP to the patient in front of us that make physiologic sense and don't use arbitrary tables? Well, one of the ways is by using lung compliance. Now, compliance equals change in volume divided by change in pressure. And for the lung, this is tidal volume divided by what we call the driving pressure, which is the distending pressure at end inspiration or the plateau pressure minus the baseline pressure at end expiration or on the mechanical ventilator, PEEP. The idea here is that setting PEEP to the level of maximal lung compliance achieves the point of maximal recruitment without over distension. Now there are no large randomized control trials to support this strategy, but a pilot randomized control trial of 159 patients with ARDS that were randomized to a compliance guided PEEP strategy versus standard ARDSnet PEEP settings showed a signal towards a mortality benefit of the compliance guided PEEP strategy. But this didn't reach statistical significance, though the thought here was that the sample size was too small and thus the power was insufficient. The study did show a benefit for the compliance guided PEEP strategy in terms of multi-organ failure free days, respiratory failure free days, and hemodynamic failure free days. So how do we set PEEP by lung compliance? Well, some people recommend starting with an initial PEEP of five, but I find that if you start with a PEEP of five in patients with ARDS, you'll have a hard time oxygenating them. So I set my initial PEEP by either the ARMA or alveoli tables, usually around 10 to 14. So then perform an inspiratory pause to measure the plateau pressure and using that plateau pressure, calculate the lung compliance using the tidal volume that was actually delivered, not the set tidal volume. Now some ventilators will calculate lung compliance for you, but I find that these values aren't always accurate or precise, and so I calculate my own. I then increase PEEP by increments of two and allow about two minutes for equilibration and then repeat the procedure above. If your lung compliance increases, you can try increasing your PEEP by increments of two and repeating calculations until your lung compliance decreases. At that point, return to the PEEP that gave you the maximal lung compliance. Now, if your lung compliance decreases with that initial increase in PEEP, then decrease PEEP by increments of two until you achieve your maximal lung compliance. Now, some notes to keep in mind. Usually, you'll set your tidal volume first, hopefully less than or equal to six cc's per kilo ideal body weight to achieve a plateau pressure less than 30 and a pH of at least 7.2. Well, your best PEEP actually changes with tidal volume, and so if you change your tidal volume, you should readdress what your best PEEP is. Also, your best PEEP will change during the course of the disease, and so this isn't something that you just set and forget. It's something that should be revisited, probably at least daily. And also, as always, your best PEEP must be taken in context with, with all your other ARDS goals. It's not just something that you set in, in isolation. Another way to set best PEEP in ARDS is by driving pressure. As we mentioned before, driving pressure is equal to the plateau pressure minus the PEEP. This represents the pressure swing that's experienced by the baby lung and correlates highly with lung stress. A driving pressure of 15 correlates to lung stress that is associated with ventilator-induced lung injury. Thus, it can be theorized that achieving the lowest driving pressure with a goal less than 15 should drive the best PEEP. Again, there aren't any large prospective randomized control trials to support this, but there was a study in 2015 in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was a retrospective multi-level mediation analysis in nine studies with a total of 3,562 patients with ARDS, and it found a strong association between decreasing driving pressure and survival when minimizing for confounding from disease severity. Now, is minimizing driving pressure really a different strategy than maximizing compliance? Well, we said before that compliance equals tidal volume divided by driving pressure. And if you rearrange that, driving pressure equals tidal volume divided by compliance. So you can see that for a given tidal volume, the higher the compliance, the lower the driving pressure. So I would argue that they're, that they're really not different strategies. I use the same technique that I talked about before for setting best PEEP by lung compliance. And I look at both compliance and driving pressure at the same time, and I find that they correlate really well.
Yet another way to set PEEP in ARDS is by using the pressure volume curve on the ventilator. In order to do this, the patient has to be on a volume control mode. They have to be deeply sedated or even paralyzed so that they're not spontaneously breathing. And you have to use a constant flow, which means switching from the descending ramp uh, flow waveform that we normally use to ventilate these patients over to a square waveform. This is what the pressure volume curve looks like. So you have pressure on the x-axis and volume on the y-axis. Uh, you have the inspiratory or inflation limb on the right and the expiratory or deflation limb on the left. So your pressure starts out at baseline, which is the PEEP, and increases with inflation. But at first, with increases in pressure, you don't get very much change in volume. And this is because you have collapsed alveoli that are non-compliant and that need to be recruited. That is, until you reach uh, that, this inflection point, what we call the lower inflection point, um, after which uh, increases in pressure give you a dramatic increase in volume. Uh, and this lower inflection point is thought to represent the minimum pressure needed for alveolar recruitment. And some people recommend setting the PEEP uh, about two centimeters per water higher than uh, this lower inflection point. But I don't find this to be a very practical method um, because particularly in patients with ARDS who have a heterogeneous lung injury, it's rare that you're gonna get a pressure volume curve that looks this perfect where it's even uh, possible to identify the uh, inflection points. Uh, in fact, there have been studies that show that there's as much as 11 centimeters of water of variability uh, inner, inner observer variability um, when trying to identify these inflection points on pressure volume curves. So the final method of setting PEEP that I'll talk about is transpulmonary pressure. Transpulmonary pressure is the true distending pressure across the lung. It is perhaps the most reflective of risk of lung injury. This is in contrast to plateau pressure, which can indicate risk of lung injury but can also be confounded by other conditions that decrease your chest wall compliance as opposed to your lung compliance, things like obesity or abdominal compartment syndrome. Transpulmonary pressure equals your intraalveolar pressure minus your intrapleural pressure. It can be measured at both end inspiration and end expiration. So intrapleural pressure is estimated by esophageal pressure using an esophageal balloon. Intraalveolar pressure at end inspiration is measured by plateau pressure using an inspiratory hold, and intraalveolar pressure at end expiration is measured by total PEEP using an expiratory hold. Total PEEP is the sum of the set PEEP and the patient's intrinsic PEEP. So the idea here is that if your transpulmonary pressure at end expiration is negative, then you have atelectasis. So you want to set your PEEP to achieve a transpulmonary pressure of 0 to 10 to optimize recruitment. And then you want to set your tidal volume to achieve a transpulmonary pressure at end inspiration of less than 25 to avoid volume trauma and barotrauma. Now, what's the evidence for this? So in 2008, there was a single center randomized control trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine of 61 patients with ARDS that were randomized to either a transpulmonary pressure guided vent strategy or uh, an ARDSnet guided vent strategy. And it showed better oxygenation in the treatment arm and a non-significant trend to better lung compliance and improved mortality. Now, most hospitals don't have access to esophageal balloons. Um, and so this, again, is not really that practical um, of a strategy. So here are the take-home points. Setting optimal PEEP in ARDS is important for minimizing ventilator-induced lung injury oxygen toxicity, and the adverse hemodynamic effects of ventilation. The most common method for setting PEEP, the ARDSNET tables, often works but is largely arbitrary. There are several, several other more individualized methods for setting PEEP, which have some data to support them, though not of the highest quality. And of these, the most practical strategy is probably using lung compliance and driving pressure. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this talk. I hope you go forth and heal some lungs.